Good morning. So I want to talk to you all about Venn diagrams, but not just Venn diagrams. I want to talk to you about Venn diagrams and relationships in general. And that might seem like a bit of a weird combination, but go with me on this. So a Venn diagram, first of all, is like a kind of mathematical, statistical thing. I had to actually check that I wasn't getting completely off track because I was sure someone was going to point it out if I did and uh, it was probably just going to completely <laughs> derail my, uh, my point. But they're supposed to represent how um, characteristics of different sets um, of things overlap with each other. Okay, so I have this little internal theory, and again, I have no, you know, that I, I kind of subscribe to that belief that there's very little unique thought in this world, usually something that you think has been thought by someone before, such as the nature of brains and how they work, and also just the fact that there's been so many people in the world, uh, you know, over, over the years. But I remember doing a lot of work during my coaching diploma on... Um, values and beliefs and, and needs and all those kinds of things and I think that there's there's a way I think it would be hard to actually write down and demonstrate um, but if you think about the people that you interact with a lot in your life you know so the people that you have close relationships your friends and your family and you know romantic partners that kind of thing um, and then sort of taking it into like workplaces and stuff as well. There's a general concept that I think works fairly well. And I've definitely used it in coaching before. Um, where, you know, your sort of values um, you could represent in a sort of theoretical Venn diagram. And what you will find if you if you sit and think about it is that you your, di your diagram uh, will overlap to some degree you know, probably fairly significantly in some cases with the people that you spend the most time with generally. Um, and I think this is really important when it comes to, you know, like long lasting relationships. Um, it's quite unlikely that you will have a long lasting relationship with someone who does not share uh, at least some of the same values that you do. Um, I think this is often, you know, it, it's it's the kind of thing where there's a lot of factors involved in that kind of experiment. There's a lot of different things that come into play, a lot of variables. There's lots of reasons why relationships don't work out. Um, but I, I kind of think that by far the most common is to do with, you know, actually you didn't really have, when you say things in common, when I say things in common, I mean, you didn't have an, enough of your core values overlined. And, uh, uh, over overlapped and and aligned. That's a weird creation of a new word there. Um, so I hope that kind of makes sense up to this point. And I think the other thing to say about your Venn diagram is that everyone's Venn diagram will change slightly as your life progresses. You know, I think as you get older, so when you get to the age that I am just now, which is sort of early forties, um, then your values are different from when you were in your early twenties, um. So, you know, you want different things from relationships. You know, you, you might not even be aware of what your values are when you're that age. I certainly wasn't. So that's, you know, why it can be, that's why it's really challenging to maintain relationship for decades um, because values may, you know, drift off in different directions. And if they drift off too far, then it might actually be that that relationship's not viable anymore. Um, and the same thing goes for, like, in, in your employer employee relationships as well so I remember having a really interesting block of coaching sessions with someone who will remain nameless but if they're watching they might recognize themselves and we kind of got into you know discussing you know I'd got a real feel for what their values were as part of the coaching sessions and um, I think they did too and you know we talked a lot about frustrations in relation to their employer um, I knew they'd kind of gone from one job that was like their dream job and then it wasn't quite what they'd hoped it would be and then they moved into another job that they thought was a good alternative and then again over time that kind of morphed into something else that wasn't really kind of fitting with their values 
um, and then they ultimately, you know, kind of did a did a U turn and went went back to you know what they had thought was their dream job um, initially, but they realised that that was what they wanted to be doing. And I think that's a really really good representation of that. So you know they they had these kind of ideals and values of a of a job. They then went into it, found that their experience of it on that occasion wasn't, you know, wasn't aligned with that to the point where it just generated too much discomfort and discordance with their values. So, you know, you either have to, um, you either have to kind of grit your teeth and, and kind of bear it and carry on, or you leave and you do, you know, and you move to something that makes you feel a bit more comfortable. Um, you know, that's kind of aligned with your values and that was what he did and initially that felt fine but then the values of the company uh, as were described to me kind of changed over time as well um, and so those kind of Venn diagrams just drifted apart again to the point where you get that discomfort again and uh, ultimately that was what led to him then going back uh, you know to, to the, the job that he did before but I think in a, in a different role um, and maybe just slightly more prepared for it I guess. So yeah, I think I, I hope that makes sense. It's one of those kind of weird things that makes sense to me in my head. I think how you would actually struggle to diagrammatically represent this Venn diagram of your values. But I kind of think as you go around day to day life, you know, interacting with people that you don't know, like to some degree, that's kind of what you're doing when you're getting to know someone is that you're almost feeling out, <clears throat> you know, how, how much do our Venn diagrams overlap? Um, and there'll be lots of different ways to represent that, I'm sure. But, you know, I, I would hazard a guess that, you know, the people that you gravitate towards more, um, especially, you know, people that you consistently spend time with are people that probably um, hold similar values to you. But, yeah, I don't necessarily think that anyone has 100% um, identical values. So that's not a kind of realistic um, thing, given how, you know, unique everyone is if you think about it's difficult for everyone to be unique but if you think about how many people are in the world think about how you know different daily experiences and different combinations of experiences you know there's an there, it's just completely immeasurable in my head um, and that, that's why I think everyone is absolutely unique so you will never find anyone with exactly the same values as you but you know just have a think about that you know to what degree do my values overlap with the people that I spend the most time with, and I bet you would find that it's probably a significant amount. Um, so I hope, I hope that makes sense. It's also it's a useful little tool to use where you're trying to figure out things like, you know, maybe not so much, well, yeah, relationships. I suppose if you're having any kind of mental quandaries over relationships, just have a think about that. You know, to what degree do our values overlap? Um, you know, maybe even have a conversation about it <clears throat> and see where that goes. Same with your employer as well. You know, if you're you're feeling a bit uncomfortable at work, you know, actually, is there enough overlap in how you know what I believe in and what they believe in? Um, I think organizational culture is a chat for another day. I have some thoughts on that as well, but that's a chat for another day. So yeah, let me know what you think about <clears throat> Venn diagrams and uh, relationships. Um, what do you think that would look like? Uh, how would you represent it if you could? Be curious to hear your thoughts. Catch you next time.